Okay, today we're uh, back on this uh, little machine here, and the Saab Sonnet 2 3, and, and we found out that there's no compression, so, uh, except for one of the cylinders has some, and so as we're moving into this mystery, I'm just saying, hey, we may as well show it here. Um, so we're looking at a, uh, at the top of a head, cylinder head, right there, and and another one over here and the valve covers have been removed and there's your four valves and your rocker arms valve springs you can see there and over on this side too exhaust manifold connected to the side of it there how the distributor goes around in a circle along the same time that the uh, Valves are going up and down, and around and around. And that's the way it all works. And the same with this. And these are usually not real hard to, they're not too strong, somewhere around as far as the torque that these bolts are put on to. This one looks like a cast iron head. Anyway, they don't need a lot of torque, as long as everything's good precision parts and things stay together pretty well when they're precision um, surfaces and so forth. And here we go as our little push rods. Right there, the top of the stems. You check these for wear, mashing, mushrooming, other uh, you know, adverse wear, not being square, worn off on the, one side versus another and you can usually see old machine marks or so forth that haven't been worn much and you can see kind of glazed uh, shape uh, malformation if they've been uh, you know ran loose and abused and so forth I would normally tap that's going down so you can push them down like so so you know so that's what's happening when the engine is running and those push rods and you can kind of feel them tell whether they're binding up if you get a straight shot in there, you don't want to bind it with pushing on it too crookedly or anything. Put it into a bind, but um, boom. That one, that one seems to hit back a little, a little differently than the others. Probably just a little carbon, but I don't think it's enough to create the loss of compression that I'm seeing. So they all move back pretty good. The springs seem uh, the the springs seem uh, pretty strong. That one's a little loose. But. It's all workable. Motors should run in those conditions. So now after disconnecting the battery again, before we get into working on this thing, we're going to see how these uh, <coughs> exhaust pipes, what you call the exhaust manifold supposedly here, comes off and gosh, it's just like a dream. As rusted as they are and everything, for some reason this car just has a nice way of of uh, turning bolts, you know, and the car has, you know, 80, 80, 90,000 miles on it. Um, pretty amazing. Nice. Oh, let's see, we got a tweak on the pipe, so yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of stress there that was bound up in that connection. This is great. Mechanic's dream is not to, to be, is to be able to take these off without the studs. <coughs> Being bound up or coming out from the other side, <clears throat> um, without them being all rusted and tearing up on you, you know, or breaking off. It's uh, one of those connections that can typically break if you're not extra extra careful with the situation. Exhaust manifolds um, and those bolts and stuff. They 
they deal with an extreme amount of heat expansion you know so it's shape changing while the car is cooling up uh, warming up and cooling off and, uh, heating up extremely and at certain times when you're running it uh, like you know hard uphills etc you know. so this is Sweet disconnection. That was from the start. Of course, I had sprayed this thing on probably three, four different occasions as I'd been around it and close to it, and again with um, you know some kind of rust breaker, some penetrating oil. I kind of like the I kind of like this blast stuff. It's like way better than most of them. So if you get a if you get an eye for what that is, PB famous blaster, penetrating catalyst. Yeah. Yep. Fresh, fresh turn. And you get to see it as it's really happening here. Those bolts had not been loosened up or turned for many, many, many years. <clears throat> We've took the cylinder heads off of this Saab sonnet and um, it appears as just about like I expected with one variation. We're going to take a look here. We've got some burning going on on the pistons here on this side and um, here we go now as you can see here there's a little indentation a spot that's been ate, ate out that's from that's from excess of heat um, possibly you know lack of lubrication but mostly in this particular case it would be excessive heat uh, spark plug comes in this direction from both cylinder so and uh, where it sits in there exactly couldn't say but you know probably something like that so it's pointed in that direction and it's pointed uh, in the same direction on the other side too something like that would be you know so that would be where the hottest place would be where the where the fire in the cylinders is the hottest and as you can see we have a burn in the piston that's why it's so there was no compression at all on these sides here so it's gone down there it's kind of melted up a little bit against the cylinder wall there on the top but the heat is on the top when it's in its compression stroke. There's the most volatile uh, fuel situation at that time. Um, so again, there you are. The scoring on the uh, cylinder wall there, not so bad. It just seems like this happened pretty quick. And uh, not over a long period of time to uh, gouge up the motor, gouge up the cylinders, just burn out the softer, uh, most burnable metals there, which is the aluminum piston. So that's what we have. We've got a burn on this side, and equally a burn in the same type of location on the other side. Okay. And that, of course, is not going to provide for any compression.